Okay, here we go. Da -da -da. Look at this. Here is from Cornell University, a professor who was exhilarated by Hamas's attack. Can you imagine? October 7th, people are getting their heads chopped off, wombs cut open, babies killed. And here is a Cornell University professor who was exhilarated. Why? We're going to go into that. Guess what? As a reminder, what most people don't know, Cutter donated $103 million to Virginia University. But look at this. Cutter has donated almost $2 billion to Cornell. This is why they're supporting Muslims, Islam. They gave seven billion to or seven hundred million to Texas A and M, seven hundred and forty million to Carnegie, seven hundred and sixty million to Georgetown University, the School of Politics, six hundred million to Northwestern University, the School of Journalism. They've infiltrated the school systems, okay? And so now this is all the propaganda that they're hearing. Let's get rid of that. So here we are now. I want you to notice here's Cornell University. You can see it in the logo. It says Cornell University. You know, their cutter is funding the Comparative Muslim Societies program. This is what people don't realize at our Ivy League schools. Dark money nightmare, how Cutter bought the Ivy League. Here it is. This is why the colleges, everyone's going crazy. At least 100 American colleges and universities illegally withheld information of $13 billion in undocumented contributions from foreign governments. This is what's going on in our school system. And look at this bottom one. Cutter makes it possible for Ivy League universities to claim that they receive no funds from the Qatari state because the donations are funneled through other organizations. This is what's going on. Now look at this. This is from a book from 2008. Notice, top right, how the American textbooks mislead on Jews in Israel. It says, little is known about prejudiced teaching in even at the high schools and the great schools. It says in October 2008, at one of the high schools, they had hit a Jew day. This is in the high schools. Look down here. It says, the people who are producing the information about it in textbooks are largely funded by the Saudis. Okay, now look at this. California University offers extra credit for marching against Israel. Polling shows that a majority of those aged 18 to 24 believe that the Hamas massacre of the 1,200 Israeli civilians in Israel was justified. Hundreds of Philly high school students walk out of class to march in support of the Palestinians. Bloomfield Hills High School students to participate in a nationwide walkout for Palestine on Wednesday, October 25th. This is right after it happened, a couple weeks. Where does, so here we have Cutter involved in our textbooks and nobody knows because anymore they don't allow the students to take the textbooks home because it's school property and you don't get to read what's in them. Now, here is Pearson. Pearson Publishing is the largest textbook publisher in the world. They print medical textbooks. They print school textbooks. As a matter of fact, they made a profit of $3 billion in 2017. Okay, so there's Pearson. But guess what? In this school system, we find Pearson publishers are the largest distributor of anti-Semitic, anti-Israel, anti-America, anti-Judeo-Christian values, and anti-Zionist content in America's classrooms. You know why? Their largest shareholder is Cutter. That's who owns Pearson Publishing, along with Turkey, Saudi Arabia, and Libya. They're the ones who are doing the textbooks that are in the... And nobody knows this. This is why I want to get this out. Nobody knows this. Cutter is paying the teachers and supplying them with anti-Semitic textbooks. As a matter of fact, the protests and encampments at college campuses around the world that are in solidarity with uh, Gaza, look how many are in the United States. I mean, you have them in like Argentina, South America, over in Australia, 
you know, Africa, Europe, a lot in Europe, but look at America. I want to mention real quickly, this is the problem. There are the three stages of Islamic jihad that most people aren't aware of. Number one is the sword of the hand. Go kill the infidel, which is anyone who is not Muslim. Then you have the sword of the mouth where you protest. Then if you can't do either of those, you have the sword of the heart, which is where you go away and you plan and you strategize. Look at this. Top story, Wall Street Journal. Activist groups trained the students for months before the campus protest. These were not spontaneous. All of these protests at these schools were planned. So what do we see here? For example, here, as a U.S. citizen charged with providing material support to ISIS and receiving military-type training as an ISIS fighter. And so then we see protests. And so what? Then we see, so you've got the sword of the heart going to the sword of the mouth, going to the sword of the hand. It's stages that they work in. Here is what's called the micro intifada, how American protesters are being trained to be militant. Uh, Jill, I know I skipped a video or two. Go ahead and play those. We demand a free Palestine from the river to the sea. And that we stand with the Palestinian resistance and their heroic and brave action on October 7th. And they said, long live October 7th. We've already had the sword of the heart. They've been training for years. We are now at the sword of the mouth. We are about to experience right here the sword of the hand. It's coming. It will be here, I believe, by election day. You're going to see it. Go ahead and play the next video. And, uh, and, and, and let me say this in English so you can understand what I'm saying. I have translation. No, I know you have translation, but I'm, I just want to make sure you get it right. There will come a day that we will see far more radical extremists and terrorists coming out of Europe because of lack of decision making, snowflake reading, trying to be politically correct, or assuming that they know the Middle East and they know Islam and they know the others far better than we do. And I'm, I'm sorry, but that's pure ignorance. Exactly. But guess what? I printed this out this morning. That's been, be been available forever. They have a primer on how to get away from the police, have the mob come together to get themselves away from the police. They also have uh, the most important appointment is always on the barricades a do-it-yourself occupation guide, how to break into places. All of this is available right now. As a matter of fact, oh, I left it on my desk. I, printed, I can show it to you. We don't understand what is going on right now. And here we have European Muslims calling for a global caliphate. Muslims across Europe are chanting Allah Akbar, discussing ways to form a global Sharia law by force. This is what's going on, but people are unaware. <clears throat> Wall Street. Now, this is going to, in my book, <clears throat> America at War, I talked about what was happening. As a matter of fact, on page 124 of my book, I said Iran would attack Israel in early April. I said this when I wrote it six months ago. I'm the only one who said that. And that happened. But the other thing that's where this crash is coming is economically. Look at this. Wall Street's mega banks have trillions of dollars off balance sheet in a replay of the counting hubris that led to the 2008 Wall Street collapse. As a matter of fact, JP Morgan, Bank of America, and Citibank are holding seven trillion dollars off of their balance sheets that they just now, this was just from May 3rd. This is just from yesterday. They're finding out that they have all of this money that they haven't been putting on their balance sheets. Seven trillion dollars that they're going to have to write off very soon. Uh, and this is why I uh, wrote my book, America at War. But I need everyone to remember, reviews, reviews.